Welcome to the MLS show. We are back for the little little break for a couple of weeks because we like MLS. We're doing stuff, yeah, exactly. Just like MLS. Um, we're back to discuss the MLS Cup final. The two conference finals have been decided. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the first was the, the Western Conference. That was decided first. Colorado, no choosing. Choosing to uh, lose their only home game of the season at a time when the... If they chose to, it wasn't the best decision. You <laughs> no, okay. Choose was probably the wrong word. Managed to lose mm. the uh, the only home game at a time and they couldn't really afford to. Uh, lost the away leg, 2-1 at Seattle. Um, Kevin Bale scoring the goal for them there, but got beat 2-1 there. Come on. I thought 2-1 was a lead that they could turn around. Um, at home, given how strong they've been at home. Yep. Man, a few they like, they, they won 11 home games, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. And I think they drew three, lost none, didn't they? Yeah. Before that and stuff. So, you thinking, yeah, they just need to get no. one goal. That's all the problem is, though, they're not, a t they're not a team full of goals. They, they've won a lot of home games, like, by the odd goal. Mm. And I think, I think that probably set the mind for, for, um, for Seattle. Seattle just probably thought, go there, be positive, nick a goal, and, and we could just sneak away with I'm this. Tired, Teddy, okay? I'm alright. I'm alright. I'm alright. It's nice. Maybe not the bank can't bring this up. It's alright. You want to be deserved. The viewers deserve to know what the entire. Do you know what? This is a face that stays up and watches the last games. I've lost it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lost last night. I did. Don't tell. Oh, oh no! Live. Let's get back on to Colorado and Seattle. Did Tim Howard being out make any difference? Zach McMath, of course, started the season brilliant. Maybe from a leadership point of momentum. view, I don't think from a goalkeeping point no. of view. Not that I'm, I'm saying he hasn't had a good year in them, that's because he has. I just think from a leadership, he, he could have thrown them on um, a little bit more yesterday, all that, experience, all that experience, but he wasn't there. And um, maybe when we've got a goal behind him, maybe made some bit, bit more positive, more positive voices, and he wasn't there to provide it. So, well, listen, taking not away from Seattle. They've done the job. They've been magnificent since we told them to sack their manager. So um, they have to. They have, do you know what I mean? So and um, and also weirdly, since Clint Dempsey went off the side, and I know he's gone off the side for really bad reasons, yeah. but um, since he's gone off the side, the, the you know the partnership up front's clicked, and it's. I mean, Chris, the thing is, well, though, Morris, hang on, before we get onto that, okay. missed opportunities from Colorado. They had so yeah. many chances yeah. early on in that game to score goals. They could have walked in three 0 at half time, but you can't afford to miss opportunities, like, especially when you're missing, like Ped says, the leadership at the back and stuff like that. You just cannot afford to. You know, football teams make a name for themselves when and they stand up for themselves in adversity. The Colorado buckled under the pressure. You know, they didn't finish things off and they conceded the goal, and that's what happens. So, also, runs to be perfectly honest with you. As a New York City fan, hey, look, and that's, He's calling that's fine it. He's as well. Calling it. I mean, the goal. It was, a, it was a brilliant finish from Jordan Morris, and he's had a fantastic yeah, season. He's second only to Kyle Lavin in the, the most goals scored by a rookie. He's been absolutely brilliant, and I think like Ben Sherman to lead them less now then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. There will there'll be calls, but no. Well, oh, no, there will be calls. Maybe maybe he's quite, he's quite maybe good. maybe more than maybe you expect him to get a little bit more national team action there. Because he's got all he's, he's he powerful, isn't he? He's powerful, isn't he? Yeah. He's going to have to. He's going to have to. Jürgen's gone, hasn't he? He's got a uh, Bruce Arena, which we'll touch on a bit later. Of course, um, Morris has been outstanding for them this season. He started off, he came in with a big reputation. Joe, he turned a couple of moves down for the Bundesliga in the summer. Yeah, it took easier. <laughs> shows, <laughs> shows to go back, stay at Seattle. Um, I love the way you always derail his thoughts. Oh, uh, I don't think it's just him. Shows to stay at Seattle, and he's it's been rewarded because he's grown into yeah, the season. We started by saying he'd miss over Femi Martins, which he did. He in did the first early on, yeah. The season. But like you said before, since Siggy got the out, <laughs> Captain Suck, and he's out there. Smelters that come in. That would have to be a big hook. That was a massive hook. But um, Brian Smelters come in, and he's been brilliant since Sh that one. Smelter has dealt with it. Well, if you say so. The, if they coincided with Ladero coming in as Ladero's well. Ladero's their main man. And Ladero the has been absolutely brilliant. If anything, they could be a touch over Orion's on him at the minute. He's been fucking superb. Like. Beep! Um, what? Chris throws the switch. Chris throws the, oh, the switch. I didn't even realise it, did he? He just 
never, hard, never, so never, yeah. never do radio. Um, <laughs> no, he has, he has been brilliant. I mean, he's ended up with eight goals. He said he, he, yeah, just let's move on. He's got eight goals. Jordan Morris has ended with 14. Oh, sorry, got 14 so far. So that partnership has come to fruition, uh, certainly. And it was a, it was a massive win. Because I, I... See, these for me are just mirroring Portland last mm-hmm. year. Well, it's, it's momentum, isn't it? It's, you know, that's, our, that's our buzzword for the whole season. Mm-hmm. It doesn't it really... You don't really need to start watching MLS till about September. To be fair, <laughs> probably not a best selling point for the league, but 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 you know you, it, we watch it. No, we watch it obviously because there's not enough Chelsea in the summer to watch. So um, football wise, and it's great and it's it's, it, it's it's brilliant and it's good and, and we love it. Um, but it's anyone new just join in September. It's fine. But, but for the playoffs, it 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 does. Does make it things slightly weird, doesn't it? Because you can be the form team all season that's in the York sides or even Colorado, and then it doesn't really matter. Is if you can get, I always say, I always say, the MLS All Star Game. If you're in a good position going to that, you're not going to win in it. If you're in and around that, you have a good run in and take that into the uh, into the playoffs. Then look at Dallas. Dallas are easily the best team in this in the MLS by like a country mile. But, they can't put it together at the end because the move one out of steam. Interesting. Have a really crap start to the season. Finish strong. Just play all your resis till about August. And then just then just hit the ground yeah. running. There you go. Ped's advice. Josie Altador listens to Ped. Look at him now. And that's me link. That brings me on to the, the oh, Eastern well. Coast Conference final. Almost seamless. It would have been if you hadn't mentioned it. Yeah, you hadn't mentioned it. But you know, there we go. Uh, Montreal against Toronto. Yeah. First leg finally balanced in a 3 2 win for impact. Michael Bradley scoring a big goal, 3 1, really give Toronto something to cling on to coming back to BMO. And then last week, you know, that the second leg screen live on Sky was absolutely fantastic. I mean, what a, what a game. Both games are amazing. Both were brilliant, but that one last yeah, week. Yeah, but Montreal was 3 0 up. It was 3 0 up in this. And and um, Toronto fought back and then and then again you know, take the lead in this game. And yeah, let me just say the atmosphere was just oh, it was amazing. Wasn't it? The rain coming down and it just was a proper derby game and the fans were Toronto fans are brilliant. They were yeah. absolutely loving it, but Montreal fans were there as well. Brilliant atmosphere and it, t- t- Toronto could have easily buckled going that one. Yeah. Tor- 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 being you know also ran similar to Colorado not stepping up. Toronto really stepped up and was like, forget about that. We've got goals in this team. Let's prove it. And, yeah. and it, was, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I mean, the great, the, the pass by Piatti to the Toronto, oh, Christopher, beautiful. Montreal. He just splits the back four, doesn't Absolutely. he? And then it's a great first touch and a finish. Like, yeah. Absolutely superb. But the whole game, everything about the atmosphere was, if you were tuning in to MLS for the first yeah. time, then you, that's, that that was the best game that I've seen. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What it comes down to extra time, the way that the goals were scored, the pressure that mm-hmm. Toronto put them under from corners, from crosses. All five goals came from crosses. You've got to be disappointed <laughs> if you're Montreal for that, haven't yeah. you? Stop the cross, which is a basic for that. Imagine, basic for that I, imagine if Liverpool or Everton conceded three from a corner in a game. You'd be fuming. Those yeah. balls by the way. Regular meet us under uh, Mr. Yeah. Martinez, but yeah, you would. I mean, you know, they got themselves back into it from a corner, Giovinco. Um, cross coming in, it's bundled over, you know, first ever save, and then it, it's knocked in, and then another corner. And Josie Altador, yeah. smashing records up, Pep. He's doing well, isn't he? He's doing bad, is he? No, he's, he has really, really, like, turned it on second half of the yeah. season, and it was, again, he's just, again, I don't know whether he's just like, but maybe Josie knows the league better than I do, and he just knows. <laughs> maybe he just thinks, after that MLS All Star game, maybe yeah, he's yeah, just like having a little stroll round for the first few months of the season, you know. And then look after his body, and then second half, sound the switch the Hulk mode on and have a go. And he was, you know, he's been really good. He's been quite good, like a leader as well, getting yeah. people going and dragging people the right you way. You know, I suppose he's doing everything you said he yeah. should have been doing because he what he was. Letting people bully him, he's massive, he's a monster, and he was he just wasn't really. I know he was carrying some of these things, and people have been on and told us that, but he just wasn't turning it on. But we did say if him and Zierbinko can get it right yeah. as a partnership, they're probably the best partnership in MLS, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. They are little and large. 
It was Giovinco's cousin, brilliant header by Altidore, and of course he's broke the... He's broke the record, record. hasn't he? He's scored five in five in playoffs. Not only that, he's got four assists in those five games. You know, that's that's unbelievable. And even stretching it back a little bit further, he's got 15 goals and seven assists in his last 19 games. That's a, a, that is a psycho banging yeah, ball. Yeah, banging ball. And that's what you need, you know, we're talking right about time. Me- momentum and At all the right that. Time. Need, and it's Giovinco's... Everyone's not talking about Giovinco, mm-hmm. and he's still the class act. Yeah. You've not got to worry. You've got to worry about Giovinco. You've now got to worry about Altidore, and in Michael Bradley as well as the, yeah, the third DP. Well. That's potentially the three best DPs in the league in one team. But, well, that I mean, that's why all the money. So I mean, we we spoke before about Toronto spent a lot of money. They have to start delivering. You know, people were saying yeah. if it didn't happen this year. And also, the, let's not forget the money they spent on the stadium as yeah. well, because that that really helped the other night. I mean, yeah, yeah. Having roofs on that stadium was a bonus. Do you know what I mean? With in the piston down rain, a in the rain. Do you know what I mean? For the atmosphere, but it just yeah, because it, it harnesses the atmosphere. All that sound just dissipates outwards, but it really, dissipates. Yeah, love that word. Thanks, right, mate. Yeah. Uh, it, it was really kept in, and that creates that atmosphere. And the, you know, the brilliant fans that the, you know these got some of the best fans. It's Toronto are very, but that very sort of British identity about them yeah, as well. Yeah. And it was brilliant. It was just yeah. such a such a good game. I mean, Montreal played their part as well because they just like never give up either. I mean, there was a few little scraps, and it was it was good. It had, the, it. it had the a very and this will sound a bit sn- not snobbish, but obviously we're just judging it. Napa had like a British feel to yeah. you know watching it, didn't it? Like a proper cup well, side, it, even hitting each other. Just before we carry on with the thirty six goals between yeah. Diego and Cohen Altador this season wow. as a partnership, yeah. absolutely. Well, fantastic. I was just about to say. I think because the reason why it was such a good game was because it's not oh the atmosphere was so good because it's not just Canada is it it's both places have got very u- unique identities yeah. Montreal's obviously you know the French, French, French and French Canadian mm. and and then you've got Toronto I'm not saying it's like a British thing or whatever mm. but they've got their own they've got their own identity whether mm. that's a Canadian identity or, or or whether it's just a Toronto thing but both of them feel like almost like different places mm. looking from the outside in yeah. Um, and that, that's almost like a Liverpool Manchester thing, like yeah. like probably quite similar in, in in a lot of things. But we just think that either ends of a spectrum. I'm not going to say what that spectrum is. No, um, say, um, but and that that it's it's, it's not hatred. I would think it's just that for that, that ninety mean, minutes, it's pro, it is gives that a little bit rivalry, isn't it? I mean, it, the game, you know, the game went. To, Piatti gets them back in at a two-two, and then Toronto scored again. We go into extra time, and then Giovinco. Limps off. Yeah, he did. Luckily, it just it looks like it's just a cramp. I hope so. Cramp in I hope car. so. He he limps off. Shady comes on and Chris Bang. within a, what a, a minute. Or so. What a header! Again, Shady. You know, it's it's yeah. uh, it, the Benoit. It was <laughs> Benoit. It was over and over again, though, wasn't it? I mean, Shady comes on. He ha- he got big shoes to fill there. Yeah, Giovinco. Everyone knows. Say that. The, yeah, size, yeah, size, 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 size three. <laughs> Everyone kids, knows he's the, the star. Kids. Killing Killing the kids. Size, and you know it? what? This is kind of what I was saying before. Is that team their heads could have gone down with Giovinco going off. And he could have gone down because, you know, Piatti gets them back into it and, they, you know, it's like getting dog poo on your shoe. You just can't get rid of it. And that's what it, it was like with Montreal, wasn't it? You couldn't get rid of them. You lose your best MLS player. show in no way thinks that dog poo is similar to Montreal, in fact. <laughs> so they couldn't get rid of them. Yeah. They lose the best player. Yeah. The Reds could have dropped. Mm-hmm. He never. Yeah. The guy who comes on for him steps up and scores a goal. And then the fifth is all about Josie going yeah, to full there. Uh, I can find my beast mode. Yeah, it was good. Funny. Good run, great run. Strength. Used all his strength and uh, put a good ball in the box as well. And, and it was a great finish, great slide and finish. Because yeah, it was so yeah. quick, because the goals came so quickly together, mm. the crowd was still sort of bouncing from the first goal. So that second goal goes in, it's like just, it, just everything just went mad and erupted and uh, it's brilliant. And people had no shirts on, it was still a bit cold. And that so be cared, nipples on toast. <laughs> So the you know it ends seven five the most goals in a playoff game I believe twelve goals, incredible two two brilliant you know two brilliant um, finals leads us on to this obviously Toronto mm-hmm. it's at the Demo Stadium the final just before we get into it me and Chris were talking off air Chris just is not a fan of this playing it no it's crap it's crap it's crap, it's crap. It's not a, it's crap. Should it be? I said this to Chris. Pick a stadium. Crap, crap, yeah. crap. Just like what they do Champions League. Yeah. In the start of the season, do the way this every is other where the final is. 
This is the where the final is. Don't say stuff like that. In March. This is where the final is. I no, I don't even think it needs to be done in March. I just think you could do it. You could do it at the beginning of the playoffs. Right. Okay. At the beginning of the playoffs, you just say. You maybe pick a team that didn't get into the playoffs. Maybe that would help. So they it? Host it. Yeah, and, and and get crowd and stuff. get the crowd. But obviously, the traveling will be a big thing. I don't think it is. I don't think I don't because you know you, I know there's loads and loads of traveling. Those players are kind of used to it. You've got to fans are used to it. Yeah, and you've got. So what if you if you know it more than three weeks in advance? If you know at the start of the season, that's when it should be. It should be at the start of the season, not at the beginning of the playoffs. You know that's where it is. You can plan around that. It's like the plan for it. You know, and and that's what it that's what it boils down to. You can't be having it at someone's ground, especially with the record that they've got. They're eight three and six at home. That's a decent enough record. They only lost three games this season. Seattle, Seattle, are badly disadvantaged. And when it comes to the the, the the final showpiece, it should be a level playing field. Be yeah, because it does. It sort of makes a mockery of the whole playoff system, doesn't it? Because are you having playoffs or you're not having playoffs? And this is sort of like to go. Well, this is the happy medium. No, don't have a happy medium. Either have playoffs or don't have playoffs. Because you know, if you have no playoffs and you get these games every week and it's all fair and even play home and away, if you haven't playoffs, then it's all it then it suddenly becomes a cup competition, and that should be a fixed position at the end of the season. Like, I mean, you know, you, you like NFL, NFL, they pick up two years before, don't they? But and they, they make a week out of it, that's what they do. And, you know, the players all go down and acclimatise themselves, then they have loads of media days on like the Wednesday before mm. the Sunday. They're there, they're doing the training there, they each get given a, a centre to do all the training in. The teams know what they're doing and the fans know where they're going. build up to that, shouldn't it, and make it a spectacle? Because if you're doing it, if you're doing the, the own stadium thing, then you need to make the MLS Cup final a two-legged affair so you both get the crack at home, mm. don't you? Two leg. Or if you're doing a one-off and you want it like a cup final, off on a but day, you're just, right. Just from, a, bad from a commercial point of view, from, from MLS looking at it, you don't know where the final's going to be until a week before. Yeah. That's pretty stupid, yeah. to be fair, yeah. because it's not an easy thing to throw a cup final. You know, you want to you want to yeah. be able to advertise it as well as possible. Yeah. You want transport links. You want all this type of stuff organised. Safety. You want people getting excited about yeah. it. Don't you? That's what this could easily have, this game could easily have been played in like, like what Vancouver. Okay, Vancouver's closer to Seattle, but it's in Canada. So in a way, it's you know what I mean. It's it's only you know okay. It's what thirty miles north. Of, it wouldn't make a difference to to anyone, would it? If it was in Vancouver, it'd be fair. So. I suppose if you have to make that decision two 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 weeks then at least that would be a fair thing, you know. If it You want I suppose they want they full stadiums, don't they? That's what they'll want. You don't want a cup final with five thousand people because people haven't been able to travel there. How, how committed are those fans to make that journey? That's why I'm saying But they will be though, won't they? Americans are we used hope. to Americans are used to travelling around. They mm. travel around all the time. Thanksgiving, like they all shift around. Yeah. You know, it, it's not a big stretch. Okay, maybe maybe the fact that it's a couple weeks before Christmas, maybe that's a problem where people think well, we want to save money. But listen, if it's your football club, you'll travel. You will travel definitely. I wonder whether you know some of, some of the problems they've got, and maybe one of the reasons is some of the biggest stadiums are obviously NFL stadiums in America, and it's all you know it's the NFL season. Yeah, used to. Whereas yeah, well, if it was, it's not. It's not there's loads not, of college balls. That's not that necessarily you true though in in in, in the MLS because the the only teams that play in MLS that play at NFL stadiums are Seattle, um, yeah. New England, yeah. top of my head, top of top. You know what I mean is you could pick, for example, San Francisco Stadium, brand new mm. stadium, a year old. It's not a football stadium, now, is it? No, no, but that would have been a great place for a final to be, to, mm. you know, make a real spectacle out there. With San Francisco, obviously in. In the middle of their season. But are they worried mm-hmm. that they wouldn't be able to sell, sell the tickets and it would maybe be a little bit of balancing? Maybe, what, there's loads of college balls. We went to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Big, big place. World Cup final's been yeah. there. It was yeah, 94 yeah. was the yeah, World Cup yeah, final. Yeah. That was a beautiful stadium. Real yeah. old school. Had loads of history to it. But I think what they want to do is showcase the whole of MLS. So that yeah, includes the stadiums. Yeah, yeah. They don't, I don't think they want to take anything out of MLS. Because suddenly that becomes... Money that's leaving MLS and mm-hmm. also someone else's, someone else's. Team. I also think it's it is about attendances, isn't it? We we look at it here and go, well, the FA Cup final if it's in Wembley and it'll be sold out, or when it was at Cardiff it'll be sold out. There, 
they've they've soccer fans travel in those numbers for something like that because they're used to having to host them at home, aren't they? So they're getting a game. They, they had ten days from the final to the from the, the, the Toronto final. This will go. So they knew Toronto were hosting, so they had ten days to sell the game. They know that most Toronto they'll sell their tickets on people. They'll obviously be an allocating for Seattle. It's a small amount. This is where making whatever. a spectacle out in a week. Yeah, that that's, comes in. Yeah, maybe you know, they do need to American sports that. are amazing for doing this type put of thing. Put it this way, put it this way, right? Think about the effort that goes into the All Star game, right? Yeah. Where yeah. where they pick us they normally pick it not long after the beginning of the season mm-hmm. starts. And they do make a week of it. That that's the problem. That's their showcase that's their game. Showcase. It's not their showcase game, though, is it? That's no. a game of faffing about for an hour and a half. Where you, well, it is though, isn't it? Where they're making subs every play. five minutes, and that's what that's a, that's like to show people yeah. outside. They, have, they get a big team in and they play the game and they have a big week of it. And you know, you've seen some of that when you were in, you were over there. That's. That's not right. This is the game. This, this is, this is the game. This means something. This should be the game. For me, this game should be in Vancouver. The, the, it should be in Vancouver, and this week should be a big big lead-up to it, and it should be played at the Whitecap Stadium, and that would keep everyone happy. I also think as well, and this is probably just going too off the topic, but I also think the All-Star East v West Conference should be taking That's place. Back. Around this time as well as part of the, 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 the thing is that that all star game needs to get binned off until after the season mm. first and foremost. You have can't you, bring the teams in then. No, that's but it's it's a double edged thing, isn't but it? That's why right? it's that's why they should have Eastern West. Should be like the NFL, the Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah. That, should be like that's Pro Bowl. Take it to Hawaii. That's what they do. Take all the players to Hawaii. They love it. Have a week in Hawaii. Get to hang around with the mates. Get to play a little game of footy. That doesn't matter. Everyone's a winner. Everyone's a winner. Showcase it. Well, there you go. Who we in fact anyway, who we going to talk about? We literally, literally, literally haven't talked about the game. Yeah, literally, literally terrible post. Yeah, that, that was fat. I was literally bad. like a winner. I'll, I'll be <laughs> <edited>. <laughs> no, What's the crap. show about? Let's go on to it. Let's move on to the, the stadium actual. issues for the final <laughs> this <laughs> week. <laughs> Let's move on. I was going to say, let me know what you think about the stadium. He dived in again. Back to the game itself. Who, who are you? Go- Obviously, the favourites have got to be Toronto, but. Last season, you know, Columbus, Columbus, fantastic at the mm. top. Absolutely brilliant at home. Host of Portland, do weren't great mm. away. And Portland, I think the difference is, though, if it'd been flipped, I think, I think you look at that and you look at Toronto and you say, well, they're hosting it and they're the best team. Mm. So they've, everything's in their favour. If you yeah. flip the other way, then maybe you've gone, see, I've got the momentum and now they're playing at home. And, and then you go, well, you know, you never know. And with the, you know, with their pitch being, um, you know, the carpet and all yeah. the rest of it, but would it be Toronto and actually them being in really good form themselves and having possibly the three best DPs? I mean, Gio Vinco, he's fit, and I'm really praying he is because yeah. you know you want a player like him, he deserves it. Mm. Then I, I can't look past Toronto, I really yeah. can't. But Seattle are in a, a rich yeah, vein I mean, of form, you, you know. can see goals, Toronto, don't they? So, I think, well, you think. Three of the goals in the first leg, Toronto conceded on the counter attack, and they conceded mm. one on the counter attack yeah. in the second leg, yeah, didn't yeah. they? So they've got a weakness, you know, and it's whether Seattle can do enough. That you know, that Seattle is stingy at the back, but they're going against the, probably the best side pair in, in MLS at the minute. It's going to be a cracking game of football, and that's why everyone's going to tune in for it because it's two evenly matched sides. It's going to be a belt of atmosphere again. Yeah. I don't think it will be up there with the Montreal game. I don't think it can be. Because there's a there's yeah. a there's an intercountry rivalry yeah. there that maybe isn't is is more important to them than anything else. It's the pride of getting one over on your neighbour, but it's going to be a hell of a hell of a night. I mean, they they played once in this season. It ended in a one one draw. You were telling me before the records uh, in Toronto. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Because Toronto they played four five times. Toronto have won their in Toronto. This is they won one. Seattle have won three. And one's ended in a draw, mm. which is really interesting. Yeah. And overall, MLS meeting at seven two in favour of Seattle wins. So, you know, I suppose if you if what, you look, what does that? What difference does that make? Nothing. Mean? It's just some it's stats. Ask, 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 just some stats. It's the final stats for you to chew over. There, there are things that there are things in football though that that carry on regard like through generations. 
you know, you've seen teams like haven't got a result in twenty one years. Yeah, but this is the first. Place. This is the happens. This is the first fan. The first time an MLS Cup has been contested by two teams. That were not the originals. Mm. So this this is this is the new wave. The phone book goes out the window. This is the new wave. Historic. This is the new wave. This is the new generation. Of MLS. Of team. MLS. This is where you know. Is it on to win both teams to score? Oh, the both teams will score. Yeah, of course they will. Like, I think Ladero is is being absolutely exceptional. I'm going for a nine seven win for Toronto. Nine seven. Nine, seven. Would be amazing. I think it's going to be amazing. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Toronto as well. I'm gonna go three one. Toronto. Are we playing guest to score as well as the yeah. winner? Yeah, so go on, Chris. 2-1. Two, two, no, I'm going to go 3-2 for Toronto. 3-2. Yeah. I mean, both teams have got great attack. Obviously, we, we've talked about the 36 goals that um, Giovinco and Alcador have got. You know, just looking at Seattle there, uh, we've got what? Madero, 22 between Morris and Madero. So, there's, there's quite clearly goals in both defences. And, you know, Seattle are tighter than Toronto. Come on, it's MLS. We don't, we don't MLS. want tight defences, do we? We want it. Ideally, it'll be about 5-4. But what Seattle, Seattle have shut up shots mm. getting into this playoff. Yeah. We've only conceded three, haven't they? Mm. And they've had three shutouts in the five games of the playoffs. It's so a Nick game, though, don't they? That's it. We ain't nicking nothing against no, Toronto. Against Toronto. 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 It ain't going to be like that. It's going to be it's gonna be loud, proud, and all that malarkey. And all that. Yeah. One thing you'd say if you were Seattle, they stop the cross, judging on yeah. that Montreal impact game. Five crosses, five goals. But it's happening this weekend. Let us know who you think will win MLS Cup 2016 at Toronto. Win it. Go and have a look at Ball Seat in about March when I predicted that they would win MLS Cup this year. I have deleted that. Uh, have you done it? There you go. Well, it there. Toronto, it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We, I mean, to be fair, we did. We said that the, when we started the playoffs that they were the team who they did, they, they did get better and better and better. And it, it was largely down to Ped that Toronto got better. Yeah, be let's, be be let's be honest. These these both both, both, teams. both teams are here <laughs> because what what we said basically. Yeah. So yeah. so thank us. You know, I'm not Toronto being funny, but fans. I think I think there should be a bit more praise put, put on us. Yeah, we told them to sack the manager. And we told we told Altador to start scoring goals. But we didn't say start scoring goals. That'd be quite easy. We just said he needed to just fuck his up. ideas up because he was running around like a lazy so and so. He's a subscriber. And he's subscribed. And he's fucked up his ideas. He follows you on Twitter, he he Facebook. Joe, you see, get him, get him. Under a pseudonym. To praise us. And he scores at the week. He's going to run, pull his top up, and he'll start Head's the face. MLS shop on Ped's face there. Right? I told you, Ped. He doesn't talk anything like that. <laughs> That's what he would have said. But there you go. There you go. Let us know your score predictions in the comment section below. Who's going to win? And uh, look out for our next video when we'll be discussing Cats. Cats Gerard in and Cats in Pajamas, according to Pepper.